Hey there, it's Jamie, and we're here to take on some questions related to finding probabilities associated with a normal distribution. And so if we're looking for probabilities associated with continuous variables, the normal distribution is probably the easiest one to deal with because what we've got are two parameters. If we know the mean and the standard deviation of our distributions, we can find the probability associated with any range of values, or we can figure out a specific value in the distribution that's associated with a given percentile. And so that's what we're going to tackle today. We are going to use the Excel functions norm.dist to give us a proportion of the values that are expected to be less than or equal to a specified value. And we're going to use the norm.inverse function to tell us the value at which a given proportion is likely to fall below. And before we move on, I just want to let you know that the example that I'm stealing and the figures that I'm using have been borrowed from this fantastic book called Business Analytics by Cam, Cochran, Fry, and Ullman, published by Cengage. I'm using the fourth edition. Here's the example question we're going to work with. So we've got a company called Greer, Greer, Greer Aircraft Engines, and they sell airplane engines to commercial airlines. They offer a performance-based sales contract, guaranteeing that their engines will provide a certain amount of lifetime flight hours if the airline purchases and follows a prevented maintenance plan of service. A certain amount, pardon me, Based on extensive flight testing and computer simulations, Greer believes that mean lifetime flight hours is normally distributed with a mean of 36,500 hours and a standard deviation of 5,000 hours. So we're going to use these two Excel functions, norm dist and norm inv, to answer four questions. What's the probability that an engine will last 35,000 hours or less? Number two, what's the probability that an engine will last more than 40,000 hours? Number three, what proportion of engines are expected to last between 30,000 and 40,000 hours? And four, how many flight hours should Greer guarantee if they want no more than 10% of their aircraft engines to be eligible for the discount guarantee? All right, let's take these things together. Like I said a second ago, if we're looking to find or to solve any probability problem and we've got a normal distribution, we need two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. Those are found in this paragraph here. Our mean is 36,500 hours and our standard deviation is 5,000 hours. So to solve the probability questions, we need these two parameters and then a value of interest, and we can figure out the proportion of the distribution that will be equal to or less than the value of interest. So norm.dist is a less than or equal to function. Our first question, the probability that an engine will last 35,000 hours or less, that's the expression, probability that x is less than or equal to 35,000. I've set up my Excel sheet so that I have a place to type x, 35,000, and then a place where I'll enter my formula. So my formula is just going to say if a distribution has a mean of 36,5 and a standard deviation of 5, what's the probability that a value lies equal to or less than 35,000? And the norm dist function gives us that. Norm dist. Our value of x the mean of the distribution, the standard deviation, and then one more command that tells us that we want the cumulative distribution function, the area of the curve to the left, rather than just the height of the curve at that particular point. All right, so the probability that an engine will last 35,000 hours or less is 0.382 otherwise known as 38.21% of the time, our aircraft engines will last less than or equal to 35,000 hours. All right, question number two. 
What's the probability that an engine would last more than 40,000 hours? Ah, a long-lived engine. So we have to take this one actually in two steps. Why? Because norm dist is a less than or equal to function. So we have to calculate first the probability that an engine is going to last less than or equal to 40,000 hours. And then we need to subtract that value from 1 so that we can capture the rest of the distribution. So my value of x is 40,000 hours. And my first step is going to be to calculate the probability that x is going to be less than 40,000 hours. So norm dist 40,000, 36.5, 5, and then my caveat, true, cumulative distribution, the full area under the curve equal to or less than 40,000. That's 75.8% of our total possible values. So what's more than that value of 40,000 is just 1 minus 0 0.7580, which tells us that the probability that an engine will last more than 40,000 hours is 0 0.2420, or we should see an engine lasting more than 40,000 hours about 24.2% of the time. That brings us on to number three. What proportion of engines are expected to last between 30,000 and 40,000 hours? This is also a two-step question, or possibly a three-step question. The first step we've already done. But I'm going to show you a little visual of what that's going to look like. So here is a drawing of the normal distribution. And because I've taken it out of that fantastic business analytics book, it's already filled in. So we're really interested in this small range here between the value of x equaling 30,000 and the value of x equaling 40,000. We've got our normal distribution with our mean of 36.5, our standard deviation of 5,000. And so to get to this range, we have to start first by looking at our value of x is equal to 40,000. And the probability that it's less than 40,000 is our starting point. And we already know that that value from our earlier question is 0 0.7580. 75% of the values are going to lie less than 40,000. And then we want to subtract from that value the probability that x is going to be less than or equal to 30,000. Because then we'll calculate the entire area to the left, and then we'll lop off this area here, less than 36,000. So step one, probability less than or equal to 40. Step two, probability less than or equal to 30. Step three, probability less than or equal to 40 minus probability less than or equal to 30. We got that? Let's tackle it. All right, so our first value, I'm calling it x1, is that of 40,000. Now, if you want to calculate that, you're welcome to. I'm not a fan of extra work. So since we did it already as part of question two, I'm just going to reference that first value. The probability of it being less than or equal to 40,000 is still 0 0.7580. My second step is going to be to lop off that left-hand tail. What is the probability that our value will be 30,000 or less? Again, norm dist. Our value is 30,000 that we're interested in. It's hiding from me because my box expanded, but that's in cell B20. I'm going to type it in manually, comparing it again to my mean of 36,500, my standard deviation of 5,000, and my true option so that it knows that I want that cumulative distribution to the left of 30,000. I'm going to zoom out just a tiny bit. And now we can see that the area to the left of the curve equal to or less than 30,000 will incorporate about 9.68% of our values, a little bit less than 10%. So the proportion of our curve lying between these values, otherwise known as that captured by the expression here, is simply going to be the difference between those two values everything to the left of 40 minus what's 
to the left of 30. 0.6612 is the probability that an engine is going to last between 30,000 and 40,000 hours, aka 66.12% of engines last between 30 and 40,000 hours. All right, so our question four, how many flight hours should they guarantee if they want no more than 10% of engines to be eligible for the discount guarantee? That's a way of saying what value draws my line such that 10% of values are equal to or less than that and 90% of values are greater? And that's a job for norm.inverse. With norm.inverse, rather than specifying x and solving for a probability, we specify the probability and solve for x. So here we've got a spot for our probability. And that probability is going to be 0.1, or 10%. 0 0.10. 0 .10. And now we just use norm dot inverse. With our probability, again, it's hiding from me, b26. And then we need our mean and our standard deviation. No special caveats this time. It really is that easy. I hit enter. I'll give you that formula one more time. And this tells us that if we want to draw a line in our distribution such that 10% of values are in one direction and 90% are the other, we would say that line would be at 30,092 hours. So if we wanted no more than 10% of aircraft engines to be eligible for this guarantee, we would use the value of 30,092 hours as the number of hours we were guaranteeing. All right, that's it for norm.inverse and norm.distribution. Um, happy calculating and let me know if you have any questions.